Ahoy, my Mezconi mateys. My name is Paige, and welcome to the second installment of The Breakdown. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at the Mezco 112 Collective Rumble Society, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, Captain Nemo, and Nautilus. Whew, wow. Where at the end of this video, you're going to be able to determine if this nautical master of the seas above and below will make port in your collection. Now in these breakdowns, I try to give you as much information as possible. I know you may not have the time or the interest in some of the sections, so I provided some timestamps so you can skip through those parts that you're not interested in and get to the stuff that you are. Now, it's a video. It's on the Internet, so it's always going to be here if you decide to come back. Don't worry. I'm a big boy. You won't hurt my feelings. So for anybody who wasn't born in 1870, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea is the classic sci-fi novel written by French novelist, poet, and playwright Jules Verne, in which three men set out to investigate a rash of mysterious monster attacks and find themselves falling victim to the same fate. They are rescued only to find out, spoiler alert, that the monster is a highly advanced submarine commanded by the one and only Dread Pirate Roberts. I'm just kidding. It's not Dread Pirate Roberts. It's actually the son of a Hindu Raja named Prince Dakar, or as he's more commonly known as, Captain Nemo. Now, most people will probably make the connection with this character through Disney's 1954 classic 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea and the discontinued theme park ride, <laughs> or the character that appeared in the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Now, Mezco has offered this character before. Back in 2001, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea offered two versions of Captain Nemo. One was the cabin control Captain Nemo, uh, which offered 16 points of articulation, a bunch of accessories, and a control room diorama. All of this at the sweet price point of $19.99 and $24.99. Now, the second version also had a variant of Captain Nemo as well, and it came with a Stingray-styled Wave Rider. Now, the diorama and the Wave Rider are not included in this set, but maybe if they see strong sales numbers, it's something that Mezco might consider if they did a variant version of the character. Hmm. This latest version of the character just so happens to fall on the 20th anniversary of the last time that the character was offered. So it's enough time has passed that Mezco has decided to give the character a long-awaited update. One thing that Mezco collectors like to have with the Rumble Society characters and characters in general is a bio. The last few characters that we've gotten that have just enough that the collector can create their own universe and storylines, but it seems like some of the feedback from the boards got back to the creative department because Nemo is given a pretty extensive backstory. So the background information for this character is as follows. The man known as Nemo has cut all ties from civilized man and their ways. Nemo, an unequaled expert in marine biology and exploration, is a pioneer of the sciences and an engineering genius, having designed and built the great underwater ship, the Nautilus, which now he captains. In 1869, Nemo lost his left hand and a part of his left arm while saving one of his crew members from a great white shark attack. He designed and built a mechanical prosthetic hand that is connected to a hub grafted to the remaining muscles in his forearm. It functions like a normal hand, though it has elevated strength and can be replaced with any other attachment like his retractable harpoon, which he calls the Ahab appendage after the renowned whaler, Captain Ahab. But blah, 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 history, 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 words, words, words. You didn't come here for that. You came here to see the brand new Rumble Society member. So let's just get into it. So once you open up the package, keep an eye out for the bonus box. Along with Captain Nemo, you're going to get a brand new Nautilus. No, you're not going to get a brand new Nautilus. It's not a one-to-one, -one, but you will get a scaled down version of the Nautilus. Uh, it measures about 4.2 inches in length and it's about 2.2 in height. Uh, it's going to be mounted on 20,000 leagues under the sea base. Now, the Nautilus has seen a variety of versions, and Mezco has added their own flair to this one as well. For a small piece of plastic, this has a lot of detail. From the drill nose tip, the rivets, and the shark fin paneling, um, even down to the side boarding ladders to the main entry hatch. I don't know if you'll be able to see it here. I'll try to get it. Uh, but there is a hatch right there, and the um, level of detail is just amazing. Uh, seeing that amount of detail in a, such a smaller piece made me wonder how intricate the level of detail was going to go into the figure. 
Captain Nemo keeps the time-honored Rumble Society tradition and comes in the standard tin lunchbox. And if you have Nosferatu, the roach with the golden head, Vapor, then you're very familiar with the style lunchbox that you're going to be getting. There's no difference with this. Now, we'll backtrack on that because the only thing that is different is the graphic. And that's going to be the front and back preview of the Prince of India fighting off a giant squid battling on the deck of the Nautilus, which is faithful to the source material. Uh, the top and bottom transition to the left and the right of the tin, and it shows the Nautilus diving through the depths of the deep. Now, once you do undo the latches and you open up the lunchbox, you're going to see two product guidelines, which nobody reads. <laughs> we don't need those. Wait a tick. Now, I know collectors overlook these, but it's on top, so it must be important, right? But in all seriousness, there's a few lines on this that are going to actually come into play later. Oh, hey, look, it's highlighted, so it must be important. Care must be used when posing and playing with your 112 figure, as the underbody will often have the ability to pose past the threshold of the cloth outfit. Overposing the figure may stress or damage the outfit, so be aware of this limitation when handling your figure. And then you also get a set of character specific attachments instructions and this gives you a little bit of a preview as well as provides a visual guide to help collectors reduce the chance of damaging some of the accessories that they have uh, but don't worry we'll go over that in the breakdown a little bit later and here it is the moment we've all been waiting for unless you time jumped ahead and if you did welcome to the party uh, but this is the two tray offering with a bulk of the accessories being housed in tray one now this is where you're going to get a multitude of hands holders trophies nautical items and weapons that'll let you conquer the seas above and 20,000 leagues below. Uh, we'll go over each one of them in detail, uh, but let's start off with Captain Nemo himself. Now, right out of the trade, the very first thing that catches my eye is the heavy amount of sculpt work that actually went into the figure. Uh, I spoke to somebody at Mezco and they said that this was a project that was a long time coming and you can actually see that a lot of attention was given in areas such as like the gauntlets, the belt buckles, straps, medallions, and the armature uh, that makes up his mechanical prosthetic hand. I think that this is the kind of uh, release format that works well for them. Uh, we first saw this teased at Toys Fair in 2021, and we haven't really seen much since, but the amount of time from that first tease till the time you're seeing this breakdown, although it seems short, it's very obvious that there was a lot of time and effort put into this offering. It's been 20 years since the original offering, and so it seems kind of fitting that the figure takes everything that they've learned, especially within the last two or three years, and incorporate it into this updated version of the character. Now, I want to do something really quick and show you the regular and the 2001 variant versions. Now, putting these side by side, you can definitely see how far Mezco has come. Uh, I want to deep dive into this a little bit more, uh, but maybe I'll save that for some bonus footage at the end of the video. Now, as you can tell, even from a distance, the sculpt detail has presence, and that helps draw your eye to the color palette, which was chosen for the suit. It showcases what I mentioned before about taking previous materials and designs to create something unique, and it kind of helps it stand out more on your shelf. The other armor is the pleather-like material that we've seen from offerings such as Daredevil and uh, the coats that they use for Blade and Gomez, only a little bit thicker. There's a little bit of a shift in fabric choice when you get to the arm area. The material that they use there is kind of like that thin fabric that we see with uh, shirts and suits with Agent Gomez. Uh, I have a feeling there's a reason why they did that, and once we get to the range of motion portion, I'll go over that with you. Starting at the head, you can see how the sculpted hair transitions down into the Nemo's beard. Uh, a little added detail is the beard beads. Uh, they're also sculpted and painted. I guess you can call them battle beads too. The hair is a hard plastic, but there's enough room to turn the head side to side and you still get the natural range of motion without giving it that awkward gapping uh, where it reveals too much spacing. So moving around, Nemo's head scarf or bandana is made of hard plastic and it stays stationary, but it has this flowing position. It's kind of like he's standing on the bow of the ship and the wind's blowing through there. Uh, it goes past the earring where you can kind of see where the sculpt and paint capture the figure's character. Uh, the wrinkles visually 
create a sense of age or stress and determination in certain parts of the face. It also looks like he has scars that he might have gotten from various battles at sea. Uh, the finishing touch is the slight clear gloss applied over the eyes. And if you angle it just right, it creates kind of like this catch light in his eyes. The alternate head has more of a windswept appearance with the hair and the beard, uh, which should make for some great uh, high sea shots or displays. Another noticeable difference between uh, this one and the other one is the stern and intense expression that they gave this head sculpt. I, I like when companies give characters different expression that allows you to kind of be able to put that character in different displays or like stories, which is, just translates to more hands on time with the figure. Something else that stuck out to me about the head sculpt was Mezco seemed to take the feedback that was given on previous characters such as Wolverine, Batman, and John Wick and improve like that gritting teeth look. Uh, previously, collectors have said that those characters look like they had like buck teeth or there was a bit of an overbite. Uh, with this version, it looks like they kind of reduced but kept the overbite just to allow for depth. But they added some dimension on the lower row of teeth and it just kind of creates a better overall look. The second head sculpt also gives the same sculpting techniques to give the appearance of age and experience, as well as that separate hoop earring sculpt, uh, paint detail and catch light eye gloss over the eyes. Now focusing on the upper body and the sculpt and the detail continues. Uh, the main armor chest piece is a hard plastic with kind of like a dark turquoise. Uh, it's panel lined with gold accents around the edge of the arm areas. And there's a gravel or kind of like a crack texture on the back. Now, just in case you're wondering, I did not try to take the chest piece off of this figure. Uh, this is a gift from them, and I didn't know if I needed to return it. Plus, I wanted to make sure that the figure was going to be intact for the whole uh, breakdown. But you're welcome to do it on your own figure. <laughs> now, I bring this up because most of the time when figures have like chest pieces or articles of clothing, it's easily removed by just rotating the arm up or backwards. Uh, with this figure, the range of motion that it'll get you to comfortably it's probably about eye level now personally i wouldn't rotate the arm past that point because you're just going to add stress along this seam line here and it's going to increase the chance of you ripping the material i've done it before it's not fun it's not cool it's expensive see it's all making sense right now but there is a very good range of motion here and i think like i said before it's because of the material that they chose now, something that's often brought up with Mezco Soft Goods is why is the suit not tighter or why does it look so baggy or why does it look like pajamas? And that's part of the reason why I wanted to spend a little bit of time on this. Uh, certain material allows for more range of motion. The Under Armour material is that pleather, and it's but it's thicker. So it's going to reduce that range of motion in those areas. Now, going back to the range of motion of the arms, you can comfortably get it to about eye level and going forward. You can also raise them up to about a T position. You can achieve that same range going backwards. And I'm impressed because my arms don't go back that far. Uh, but you can see where the thicker layer of material uh, would reduce that range even more if they used it. Uh, when the hands are down to the side, you can see how the chest armor plays. Uh, it kind of hinders Nemo's arms from touching his sides. This doesn't bother me because aesthetically it kind of gives the character more space and presence uh, in that chest area while it balances out the proportions of his body overall. Now moving down the side of the arm, this is where things kind of get interesting. Now halfway down you're going to see a bicep gauntlet. Now this piece can slide down. I did not try to take it completely off. But that's important to note because these arms are double jointed. But because of the gauntlet on the right arm and the design of the mechanical hand on the left, you may not be able to get that full range of motion. It's there and you can get it if you know the limits. But I would just caution people when exploring that range of motion in this area. The hands on my figure were very easy to come off and on. Uh, the right hands or the normal flesh tone hands. There are about seven of those in total and they give you a variety of expressions. Yes, I said expressions because I believe hands can also convey a lot of emotion. So the right hands are gonna pretty much consist of an open hand with the extended fingers kind of spread. You're gonna get a semi-relaxed hand. You'll get a pimp slap hand or 
You can call it a handshaking hand, a trigger hand that's used to hold guns. Uh, there's a C cup hand, and that's probably going to be used to hold your swords and knives. And then there's a closed fist hand that's going to come with the figure in the box. And when you take off the right hand, be very careful because there is a circular uh, wrist bead set that's on there. And it's a very small piece. And dropping this piece on the floor will immediately turn your figure into the Treasure Island version. Uh, that's where you're going to be spending about one to two hours trying to decide if it descended in a Davy Jones's locker, your dog ate it, or if you want to try and see if someone's going to part this out for some crazy amount of money. So be very careful. Now, moving over to the left side of the figure, you can see where they put a lot of time and scope work into the wrist gauntlets and the mechanical hand. The, the leather straps and the layers of gears, pistons, gizmos, and armor bits, those are all sculpted and painted, and it kind of gives that man and machine steampunk visual. Now, with your right hand, you're going to get a set of four interchangeable hands. You'll get a semi-open relaxed hand. You'll get a C-shape holding hand, and you'll get one that has a cybernetic middle finger. You will not be getting that. You'll get the whale off the starboard bow index pointing hand. Now, like the left side, the hands attach and detach easily. The peg is different on the right, and it's slightly larger. And that's because not only can you attach the mechanical hands, but you also use it to attach the harpoon arm attachment. Now, the harpoon attachment is the harpoon, which is attached to a string, which is attached to a spool. Uh, the feature with this accessory is that you can detach that harpoon with the string, which, fun fact, measures about 14 inches long, and it can be real back in by using like the little pieces on the side by turning them counterclockwise. Now, just like anything, the first time that you do this, there's gonna be a little bit of resistance. So don't pull the harpoon thinking it's just gonna all uncoil. I recommend that first what you do is kind of take the harpoon out of that little hole and just gently pull. Uh, I personally just kind of kept rolling it back and forth. Uh, this seems like an intricate piece and I can see a lot of people having problems with it, like breaking it or breaking the, the spool or the string. But once you've done it a couple times, it's really easy. The harpoon continues the consistency in the sculpt and the paint department. There's like lots of little layers of sculpt on the forearm side. And when I was looking at it, it seemed like there was a face there because it kind of caught my eye at first glance. Uh, but if you look at it a little bit closely, you can see an octopus, what looks like it's over a face, which is pretty interesting. Now the midsection again continues the sculpt detail and that's on the mid and lower belt. It's kind of embossed and embroidered with these seashells and trident buckles and clip rings. Uh, if you move down to the midsection, this is kind of separated into an upper and lower cut that's gonna give you about this much range going forward and then you're gonna get about this much range going back. Now you can get this figure in somewhat of a sitting position, but the chair or object will need to have a bit of an angle. Now that's due to the combination of the thickness of the material and the two belts above and below that lower joint cut. Like I said, uh, you can get a pretty high degree of range, but you have to be mindful of that area because like I said, there is that layer of thickness in the material. And then you also have those two pieces that might snap if you push it too far. Now, moving down to the legs, you're going to get thigh swivel on both the legs. Uh, they both can be raised up to about 90 degrees. And with some soft good adjustments, you could probably go a little bit more. Uh, both legs can be pulled out and you could probably get some good van damage. But you need to be very careful because if you go too far, you will do van damage. And it's mainly in the crotchal region. <laughs> you can extend the legs uh, too far out and it's going to put stress on this seam line here and it possibly cause it to unravel or expose his. So yeah, there's your collector caution alert. What everybody wants to know pretty much is elbows, knees, and toes. Yes, he does have double jointed knees. We already established he has double jointed elbows too. They're just kind of limited by those two articles of design up there. Again, the boot design going back down helps prevent it from getting its full range of motion. 
uh, so you're not going to be able to kick all the way back. The boot rotation is there and it turns out more than it does in. You'll be able to get uh, this kind of range of motion uh, pretty much going down, but you're not going to be able to get this up in the ankles. The bottom boots have sculpted treads and the peg holes at the bottom of the boots as well. Let's move right back up the right thigh, shall we? <laughs> now, there's going to be an accessory option, Mezco included with this. It's called the multi holster option. Now, out of the box, he's going to come with a pouch that's attached to this, but this can be removed to create multiple looks. Uh, be careful the first time that you take this off, just like anything, it's you got to kind of break things in. Uh, the best thing that I did was to keep pressure on the strap on the front and the back and then you just kind of wiggle it off slightly uh, after that you won't really have any problems uh, the first option that you're going to have is the pistol holder uh, this is a combination of gold bronze and silver trim and leather again nice sculpting details right down to the end that's on the side uh, it's very easy to attach you just got to line the two peg holes up and give it a little bit of pressure this holsters uh, nemo's uh, spark lock electric pistol that's what they want to call it uh, it has a very unique sculpt there's no removable mags or triggers which works because it's character sculpt design but the trigger guard is made of a thicker plastic and the muzzle does have a hole that you'll be able to plug any blast effects that you've gotten from previous gun toting characters uh, the spark lock fits firmly and when you shake it, it doesn't fall out Next is a telescope holder. It's the same thing. You take the two holes and you're going to have two prongs. You just push them together slightely with some pressure. Uh, the piece is a mix of hard and soft plastic, so the scope can be taken in and out without damaging the item or the holster. Uh, the telescope hub uh, can be extended by just pulling the knob back. It's not functional. It does have some false glass, but uh, again, it's just details. You just it starts at the eyepiece when you uh, see subtly that there's scribed letters on there and then when you move down the main tube and you can see these studs and accents and as you get closer to the object lens there's a bunch of like hieroglyphs and uh, it's almost like it's a record of his travels at sea or symbols that are protecting him from his travels at sea if that makes sense. So last attachment is the dagger sheath, and this was a hand-carved uh, knife from the bones of a fossilized dinosaur. Uh, it attaches to the two peg hole system. If you pretty much follow the curvature of the blade, it will stay safely and securely in the holster. Uh, but wait, there's more fellow collector. This weapon has a dual placement option. Uh, the dagger can also be placed on the back of the belt as well. Uh, I did some messing around and you can also put the uh, spark lock on the holster as well you cannot use the telescope holder on there it doesn't seem to want to attach uh, right next to the dagger peg is a peg hole for the sword scarab and now this is a hard plastic with gold accents it housed nemo scored uh, a mix of what seems to like simulate iron and parts of a squid that he caught at sea and at the center is like an eye or perhaps it's a hole that unlocks, Never mind, I'm reaching. Uh, but the curvature of the blade just follows the sheath and it'll stay in there securely. I say that because I know someone out there has done it backwards because I have. <laughs> the sword fits firmly and once you get the figure uh, kind of placed the way you want and the sword, you can actually use like that little swivel option so it can conform to whatever position your pirate heart desires. Another accessory from the tray one is the sextant. Anyone know what that's used for? Don't be shy. Don't be pervy. I didn't know what it was used for either, so I had to look it up. But a sextant is the instrument for determining the angle between the horizon and a celestial body, such as the sun, the moon, or a star. It's used in celestial navigation to determine the latitude and longitude. It's very tiny. Lots of detail. Don't drop it. 
And last but not least for Trey One is the Shark Jaw Trophy. Yes, Nemo obviously did not take too kindly to the shark that took his hand. So he evidently hunted, caught, and immortalized this event in an effort to enshrine his PTSD to have motivation on tap. A constant reminder of what he and his crew have given up in the pursuit of the sea monster that lies 20,000 leagues below. Moving on to tray two, you will get a hat, cloak, accessory bag, and it also includes your standard circular shaped stand with logo on it and the arm attached to help peg into the stand. Now the cloak is very well done. It's a deep ocean blue with an N at the right top of the lapel. Uh, the material that you use is, um, has some thickness and it has some weight to it. Uh, there's an S class on the neck that allows you to unhook it and open the coat. Now inside, uh, you'll see that there's two elastic loops that you can actually put the arms through uh, so it can sit a little bit better on the figure. In order to give the character a little bit more of a dynamic look, uh, while he stands on the deck of the Nautilus, Mezco added some wiring uh, that's going to be along the inseam of the coat's opening and the over shoulder lapel as well as the collar. Uh, they also did throw in a classic sailor's cap. It's made of like soft material, not plastic, and it will give you a few different looks. So you're probably wondering how this figure will look compared to other figures in the line. Uh, ask and you shall receive. So here's a few figures that I have lying around and hopefully it will cover a majority of the body types uh, from different lines for you. And there you have it, fellow collectors, the newest member of the Rumble Society, Captain Nemo. It's been 20 years since the last offering uh, from Mezco Toys. And looking back, you can tell how far the company has come as well as the toy industry overall. Uh, this offering was a callback to sculpting detail that the company was founded upon. And it pretty much showcases the features of this character and personality as well. Uh, it definitely stands out as a single offering as well as a complimentary piece to the other aquatic and rumble society characters in the line um here's to hoping that they keep with the tradition of past and present uh and offer a variant uh i think an offering that possibly comes with a cabin control or a wave rider uh that would kind of complete the circle pretty nicely now as of this video i do not know when this offering will be available for pre-order or purchase uh, i don't know the price point and i don't want to know when it'll ship uh, hopefully this breakdown has given you enough information you'll need to decide that if this figure fits within your collection when it does become available um you know i can remember watching this movie uh, when i was a kid and i remember my mom bought me the book and i had to read it and write a report on it uh, I also remember my mom saving for a year just to take us to Disney World just so we could uh, stand in line for two hours and ride the ride. And I think that's one of the reasons why this character resonates with me a little bit more. There's a lot of things that stood out about the figure on its own and the attention to detail combined with the Stoke Flames and nostalgia. Uh, this was just kind of a welcome addition for me. So I wanted to thank Mesco Toys for gifting me this advanced copy of Nemo. Uh, I wanted to thank everyone, uh, past, present, and future, if you're taking time to watch this video. Uh, I appreciate your time. Uh, my name is Paige, and I will see you on the next episode of The Breakdown. Well, I won't actually see you. Well, maybe virtually. Oh, wait, that's right. I can see you virtually so for everyone that doesn't know i do a show with a very talented photographer and friend of mine his name is jason michael that's him uh we do it on ig live and this friday october 1st we will be doing a live unboxing or i guess you could call it a re-unboxing because it's already been open we just went over it right so uh feel free to join in uh my ig handle is the toy page
I'll have it on the screen for you. And it'll probably be around 7 o'clock. Sometimes we're a little bit late, but it's always fashionably late. So hope to virtually see you there. Later.